Get your bazookas ready. Get them ready, folks. AMD stock absolutely collapsed here today uh, from 183 down to 165 at the close. NVIDIA, same exact situation. Stock was like 904, closed at, oh my gosh. NVIDIA lost like $50 a share just in the last few hours of trading here. Look at the queues here today. Look at that chart. Absolutely shocking. It reminds me of uh, the backside of uh, Yosemite, right? I mean, look at that. It's just, is that not it? Is that not it? <laughs> My gosh. Amazon stock absolutely collapsed here today. Palantir collapsed. SoFi collapsed. Pretty much every stock in the stock market collapsed. Look at Cheesecake Factory here today, okay? Three things I want to accomplish in this video here today. First thing is two huge new problems just happened here today, okay? And we they're, they're big problems too, okay? And they're the type of problems that could cause... The market to potentially get into let's just call it a big downtrend okay so we're going to speak about that what's going on there amazon and meta stocks got upgraded today that kind of didn't get paid attention to because these two massive things that happened today so you know i want to show you guys what happened there in regards to amazon and meta and what those analysts are saying about where the stock price are going and kind of give you my perspective if i think they're accurate or not and the last thing we'll discuss here today is get ready to load the boat is this time to get ready to load the boat because we got a, a big let's call it a correction crash type situation coming to the market so we'll speak about that okay appreciate you guys joining me as always i'll ask in return as always smash that like button less than 10 percent of people smash a like for youtubers i appreciate Every single person that smash a like. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. 10 days away, folks. What a time to do this sale. I got to say that because we're going to get into a really interesting market. This is the type of market you need to know what you're doing in or you're going to get caught really off guard. So, yeah, pin comment down there. Access to my number one course ever. See the moves I'm making each week. Plus, get part of that Discord chat. It's 10 days away, folks. Yeah, pin comment down there. It's a one-day sale when we do that, okay? So, let's get into two big new problems, okay? First up here, and this matters substantially. A very influential gentleman at the Fed, Neil Kashkari, floats the possibility of no rate cuts this year. Minneapolis Fed chief said he penciled in two cuts for 2024, which is, once again, less than the market's expected. Kashkari questioned needs for cuts if inflation moves sideways. Here's a really troubling part right here. Possible Fed won't cut this year if inflation stalls. It's very troubling. And the reason that's very troubling is inflation, as far as CPI at least, it has stalled. We've stalled out in the threes now at this point in time, right? And it's been like that for nine months. And so you got to start asking yourself, you know, we're going to give birth to an inflation baby here. And here's kind of the trouble, right? Well, if we look at GSG year to date, it continues to go up. I feel like every day I make a video and I show GSG and it's up higher and higher and higher and higher. And this is horrible for us. Okay, This is a commodities basket in general. And commodities end up dictating a lot of what happens with inflation. Because guess what? Everything's made out of pretty much in this world. It all comes back down to commodities. So if commodities are going through a major bull cycle and the prices of commodities are going up, eventually that reaches you, me, everybody else in the world, and we all have to pay more for stuff because commodities are running viciously, okay? Now, this shows you where we were at last year at this point in time. Last year at this time, it was awesome, right? We were flat in terms of commodities. It was a very friendly environment. GSG went nowhere at this point last year versus now GSG is already up almost 15% for the year. So we're talking about we've got a way different inflation setup. Last year, it was setting up for a good, very good back half of the year in terms of inflation. Now, because commodities are running so much, we're setting up for a very bad back half of the year when it comes to inflation numbers. That's not good. We need GSG to chill ASAP, okay? Oil prices, and we'll get more into oil in just a moment because that's a mess. But oil, oil prices are a mess, okay? 23% up already here to start the year, okay? 23 flip and flapjack and percent. Now, if we look back at the same time last year, oil prices were kept in check. Oil prices were up about 3%. We can take 3%. There's, there's no problem. 20, 23% is a whole different situation, right? And at the end of the day, most people we know still do not have electric cars. 90 plus percent of people that are driving vehicles out there are using oil. And so gas prices are going to continue. If this price continues to go up, the gas prices you're paying when you go to fill up your tank is going to be substantially higher over this next three to six months than what you're paying right now. And I know a lot of people don't like the oil, the, the gas price they're paying right now. 
So I'm just here to tell you and be the, the bearer of bad news that you're, whatever you're paying right now, you're going to think it's a deal compared to what you're going to be paying two months from now, a month from now, four months from now, six months from now, especially if oil price continues to roll. This is not good. Now, to explain this better, you know, it's kind of like being put in a chokehold. And the Fed trying to, you know, it basically has a chokehold on the economy, right? And by having in the Fed funds rate at the highest we've seen it in pretty much the past 20 years or so, the Fed is putting the economy in a chokehold. Now, at first, it's not that bad, like being put in a chokehold. It's not that bad at first. But the longer and longer you're in that chokehold, the more it's a problem, right? And at some point in time, you reach the point of no return. And so this is a scary part when the Fed's talking about not lowering rates anytime soon, potentially not lowering rates at all this year. That means the chokehold's just being on stronger and stronger for a longer and longer time. And at some point in time, we're going to reach a point of no return for the economy, right? At some point, we know how this always ends. We know how this ends with the Fed. If they keep rates too high for too long, it crashes the economy. Unemployment goes up massively. And, you know, it, that's a problem. Now, the, pro the other problem is we're already seeing this from companies. I showed this in a video a few days ago. Darden Restaurants, the biggest restaurant giant of them all in terms of sit-down restaurants, they were reported really bad numbers, really bad comps, especially on the Olive Garden side. PVH, one of the biggest clothing companies in the world, really bad guidance. Lululemon just saw insane deceleration and growth that was pretty shocking to everybody. That's why the stock was down like 15, 20% the day after earnings. Nike had a weak guide. Tesla numbers are bad. RH numbers are a disaster. And that's even at the high end, right? That's not good. Apple numbers were, from what we're hearing out of China, very weak. So you're looking at, you know, we're looking at a, a problem here. We're looking at a big problem. Commodities are running. The Fed says we're not cutting anytime soon. You got very influential people like Kashkari saying maybe two cuts, but we might not cut at all. Meanwhile, you got the biggest, most impactful companies in the world starting to talk about we're seeing weakness. Heck, even McDonald's, you know, spoke about that in their light, latest quarter, right? And the, the other problem I'm seeing is these companies that have started reporting recently or going to these conferences. Oh, you know what? There's another one I need to add on that. Ulta. Ulta just came out yesterday at a conference, a JP Morgan conference, and said, you know, it was either yesterday or the day before, and that stock crashed epically. It was down like, what, 15, 20%. And Ulta said, we're seeing a much bigger deceleration in the business than we thought we were going to see. And it's happening much quicker, right? And that just happened a couple days ago. So there's something happening here in 2024 that it's not good. Not good. It's clear as day when you see the most impactful companies in the world coming out and saying this, right? So that's where this chokehold is being put on us and they really can't let up. That's the problem for us, right? We, we could end up reaching a point of no return. Now, this leads into the second big issue. Oil prices hit six-month high on worries about Israel and Iran conflict. Oil prices hit their highest level since October as tensions in the Middle East escalated. No good. With Israel's prime minister saying that Israel will take an aggressive stance against Iran and its proxies. Those who harm us and plan to harm us, we will harm, he says, okay? Not good. Clearly, obviously, uh, an escalation there. I'm hearing about certain things are going to happen in the next 48 hours. I'm not, you know, well-versed enough to kind of give my full opinion on exactly what's going to play out in this next 48 hours. But from what I'm hearing, things are going to get a little crazy in the next 48 hours in regards to this, okay? So just leave it like that. The bottom line, the moral of the story is, this is not good. Escalations in the Middle East especially if we're talking about going into summer when oil's already in a bull run, is bad, bad, okay? Now, I need to set the, the record straight in regards to this whole situation because there's some people out there that because we're in an election year, it's 2024, they believe that the powers to be will not allow oil price to go higher. They, that's what they believe, okay? That's what certain individuals believe. Because election, B-man won't let it happen because... You know, people think B-man's the one that can dictate if oil price goes up or down. That's their belief, okay? Now, I'm here to tell you that I think the powers to be actually want oil to go substantially higher over the next six months. Because that would lead gas prices to go much higher, and that would lead, obviously, to more of a potential chokehold on the economy. And uh, let's just call it B-man not standing a very good chance in relation to the election. Because here's the facts now, okay? 
Many countries now don't want B-Man. You know, Ukraine might like B-Man, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of countries that don't like him now at this point in time, okay, in, in his administration. Wall Street does not want B-Man, and the reason being is B-Man in this next uh, four years, he wants to take corporate taxes to 28%. That's like one of his big agendas. And if he gets elected, I think there's a decent probability he'll be able to get that 28% uh, raise in terms of corporate taxes. Right now, corporate taxes are 21%. So you're talking about taking away seven percentage points from, you know, the the wealthiest, right? That really are the ones that own the stocks, taking away seven percentage points from the companies and then putting it into the government's hands. They don't want that, okay? Also, we know his administration and kind of who he has in place in terms of DOJ and all those sorts of folks, they're coming after the biggest of the big dog companies, with all these, you know, uh, things about this company's a monopoly, this one's a monopoly. I mean, they're going, it seems like just about every one of the big dogs they're going after now at this point in time, which is causing huge legal bills for these companies. It's also tr- causing them to alter their business models, right? And potentially not create as an impressive moats around them. And so when you look at it from that context, you know, who, who does big money have all their money invested in? The big dog companies. So this is not a good situation if all of a sudden their corporate taxes go up while their legal bills go up massively and they have to potentially alter their business models. This is not ideal, right? And most of the big money in Silicon Valley also don't want B-Man because B-Man's administration is going after a lot of the Silicon Valley companies. So this is not a good situation at all, right? You look at Apple, you look at Google, you look at Amazon, you look at all these, they're going after all of them, okay? Now, the view is from big money that T-Man... Is, you know, says a lot, but basically he's actually a chill moderate, okay? That's the view from big money. You know, you might feel differently, and that's fine. I, I don't really care how other people feel. I'm just here to tell you, like, what's actually going on behind the scenes, okay? People feel he's chill. He, he says a lot of crazy stuff, yeah, but at the end of the day, you look at his actions. He's, we saw him in office for four years. At the end of the day, was he coming after Apple? Was he, he might say this, he might say this and that on Twitter or whatever, but is he actually doing anything? Does he actually, did he have the Department of Justice going in there trying to take down Apple's business model or Amazon or Google or no? Okay. So says a lot, doesn't actually do it. The, the big money, they want T Man in office. And so if anything, I think they could try to, if you want to play the conspiracy game and think there's going to be a rigging of oil prices, if anything, I think they're going to rig it higher, a lot higher. Because that will basically be the last nail in the coffin. To get B Man's not already doing well in the polls. If they could have oil prices go beast mode, with you know CPI that st- stays sticky, the Fed keeps rates high, it could uh, devastate things going into the election. There's some time to play here. Uh, you know we're still what six months, five months before people really start casting those ballots. Okay, so if oil goes higher, plus we have the Fed turning more hawkish. Plus, we have CPI that stays in the threes. That means stocks are going to fall lower and a lot lower because these are all now very, very big problems. We had a Fed that was moving much, much more dovish, right? If we really, really think about the bull run we had that basically went from – it started in October, right, of this past year and really went into February of this year. A lot of that was the Fed turned very dovish, right? And they started they stopped being so hawkish. Jay Powell stopped being so hawkish on a lot of the folks at the Fed. And now it seems like, if anything, these folks are going to start moving more and more hawkish here, especially if CPI stays in the threes, which is, which is going to scare the market, right? And then if you talk about oil continue to go higher and higher, oh boy, okay, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the triple threat, okay? So the moral of this story is, this could cause a lot of volatility in the market and it could cause stocks to go lower. And we'll talk about in, in just a moment, you know, getting ready to load the boat and those sorts of things um, on a potential, you know, um, everything kind of coming together with the cloudy skies here. Okay. Now, Meta and Amazon both got upgraded. Why did they get upgraded here today? Okay. Meta stock gained on Thursday after Wall Street analyst team raised their price target for the social media stock. Amazon also got a price target hike and closed a day higher. A new report from Jeffries on Thursday reiterated a buy rating on Meta. Analyst Brett Phil upped to Jeffries' price target for the company to 585 from 550. Separately, he raised Amazon's price target to 225 from 190. So if you're wondering why. Meta and Amazon held together well compared to the market and a lot of stocks today. This is why, okay? Meta has too many advantages to count. 
could get added boost from AI, Jeffrey says. Meta Platforms is a digital advertising juggernaut, but the company's targeting abilities and technical prowess could lead to 2024 being the best year ever, due in part to the generative artificial intelligence, Jeffrey said. Quote, based on our updated market share analysis, we believe Meta could capture 50% of incremental, extra new, industry ad dollars in 2024 which would be the highest ever and well above its 33% in 2023. Ad revenue could grow at 20% or more than twice the industry average of 9%, aided by generative AI. Holy smoke, is this a no dang joke? It's Meta's moat. Meta was negatively impacted after Apple made several privacy changes in 2022 to iOS 14. Since then, the company has managed to regain market share and sees accelerating revenue growth due in part to $27 billion in capital spending in 2023, which may have helped the company develop several strategic advantages over peers. Quote, firstly, the AI recommendation engine has continued to improve with reels driving 25% growth in, in time spent watching videos, 100%. As somebody that uses Instagram, yeah, they've gotten pretty freaking good at that. I'll say that. Secondly, the Advantage Plus suite of ad tools have driven significant improvements in advertisers' ROI, return on investment, well beyond competitors. Finally, Meta is seeing impressive momentum with click-to-message ads, which have already eclipsed a $10 billion run rate as of Q4 2022. Additionally, Meta is likely to keep benefiting from additional generative AI tools, such as an image expansion, text variation, and background generation, all of which will likely result in meaningful improvements in click-through rates. What do I say on this? Preach. 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 He is preaching to the choir, okay? As a Meta shareholder, these are all things that I 100% agree with. And I'm glad more and more folks are coming to this realization, right? And so, you know, Meta's numbers this year, really regardless of what happens in kind of the macroeconomic landscape, should be phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. The company's clicking on all cylinders and it's beautiful, okay? Absolutely beautiful. Now, another situation happened here. Alphabet, Meta, and Amazon in focus, and we'll get into the other Amazon upgrade in just a moment, in focus as WebBush sees significantly increased ad spend. Alphabet, Google McDougal, Meta, and Amazon were in focus on Thursday as WebBush Security said in a recent survey showed U.S. ad spending has increased significantly in 2024 compared to the end of 2023. In, in the first quarter of 2024, 48% of marketers grew their digital advertising spend by at least 10% year over year with 12% reported growth of over 20% year over year, says this analyst. Advertiser sentiment is improving with expectations for stronger growth in 2024 relative to our prior survey work. So, moral of the story is, it sounds like especially Meta's number is going to be phenomenal. But Google's obviously an advertising giant, so they should benefit from that as well. Not as much as Meta, likely. And Amazon's an advertising giant now as well, so they should see a benefit from that. Okay, But, but hold your horses for just a moment, right? Because... There's two ways to look at this. One is your business is really strong, so you have extra cash flows to advertise, right? So let's imagine let's imagine I have a car detailing business, right? So I have this car detailing business, business is super strong, and I'm seeing great results on my Instagram ads, so I want to spend more and more and more, right? Okay, that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at this, if you want to take a, you know, let's call it a glass half empty view, right? Because we can always look at things glass half full, glass half empty. Let's imagine my car detailing business, I'm not quite getting as many calls as I was getting before, right? Maybe the consumer's getting pinched up yet. So now instead of getting their car detailed once a month, they're getting it detailed every three months or six months or something like that, right? So I'm like, crap, I need to generate more business. So I'm like, I need to run more and more ads, more ads on Instagram, more ads on, on Facebook because I need to get customers. So, you know, business is tough. So I need to run more and more ads. So you could look at this, you could look at this glass half full. Everything's great. Let's spend, spend, spend. You can look at a glass half empty. All oh, the times are, are, you know, getting more challenging. So therefore I have to up my ad spend to get money through the door, right? So I don't know which it is. You know, it, it's really hard to tell because we're getting all this conflicting data at the end of the day from all these companies. And so I don't know. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. You know, but at the end of the day, companies like Meta, 
They can put up their numbers regardless of what's going on, right? Amazon still plenty to like. Separately, Thrill and the Jefferies Internet Analyst Team published a positive note in Amazon Thursday after meeting with industry experts and former employees. Amazon has positive opportunity in advertising supported video in its prime streaming platform and improving cloud environment from its Amazon Web Services business, according to the note. The Jefferies Analyst Team added, however, it, 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 it expert believes Amazon needs to improve its AI offering to stay competitive. Okay. Amazon has not yet set a date for first quarter earnings. Fact set estimates report coming later this month. Amazon shares have gained 20% so far. So in regards to Amazon, I really view them as a, a must-own stock. Okay, And I'll share in just a moment the five must-own stocks that I feel like should be in everybody's portfolio out there. But I can look at this Amazon Web Services situation. Did you see what happened yesterday? It was either today or yesterday. Sometimes our days run together, right? Amazon, it came out that Amazon Web Service is actually cutting a bunch of jobs, okay? Now, there's two ways of looking at this. You want to go glass half full, you want to go glass half empty. We can go both, okay? Glass half full is Amazon has uh, some bad, you know, some employees that maybe weren't cutting the mustard in AWS. You need to get rid of those employees, right? Maybe they're toxic to the culture, whatever. Maybe it was to send a threat to the other employees of like, get your stuff together, salespeople, like make sure you're doing a great job or you're going to be out. That's way of looking at, I guess, glass half full. The way of looking at a glass half empty is maybe AWS numbers aren't looking as strong as Amazon thought, and therefore they're cutting those employees. So I, once again, we don't know. We're not insiders in the company. We'll find out in their numbers. If I had to go, I would go glass half full in regards to that. Now, what are the five must-own stocks, in my personal opinion, that it's just, you've got to own these stocks, okay? Like, to not own these stocks is almost, it's almost sacrilegious in terms of stock market terms to not own these five stocks. You got to own these ones. Okay. Everybody's got to go own meta. Everybody's got to own Amazon. You're talking about the dominant advertising company in the world in, you know, just impossible to compete with. You got to own Amazon, the e-commerce giant, the service that the, you know, the internet runs on AWS, right? You gotta, you gotta own Amazon. You gotta own Shopify with their e-commerce opportunity and just in business in general, and they continue to expand that business, right? From what I heard, they're stealing away employees from Salesforce now as they push further and forward, further into B2B e-commerce and the back end of businesses. Like, yeah, Shopify looks like they want to become more than just a, you know, a small business type company. NVIDIA is one of those must-own companies. It's just, you, you know, you got to have some sort of position in NVIDIA. You can't not, right? And the fifth one would be either Alpha or Celsius. There's two of the most well-run companies of the past five years in the stock market. And those two just, you got to own them. You got to own them. You can't just, you know, you got to own at least one of those, okay? And so my opinion is those are must-own stocks. You just got to own them, okay? Next up here, let's talk about getting ready to load the boat, okay? So this is back when I was born, 1989, all the way through today in the NASDAQ, right? The first thing that you got to keep in mind is every dip is always a buy in terms of the stock market. It just is. Like, you know, whatever's going on out there, whatever the negative stuff is, recessions, crashes, geopolitical stuff, presidential elections, it all comes and it all goes. And at the end of the day, the market goes higher and higher and higher and higher, right? The NASDAQ since 1989 is up nearly 4,000%. And it's had several big crashes in its history. I mean, you know, some of these crashes that don't look like crashes were epic crashes at the particular time, right? Epic crashes. Obviously, tech bubble was an insane crash, right? Great financial crisis was an insane crash. And we've had several corrections and crashes throughout the years, including the 2022 one, right? Which doesn't get talked about enough. But let's not forget, in peak the trough there, the NASDAQ fell like 5,000 points. And to put that in reference... The NASDAQ was like 5,000 points or less in the, in, in the, the NASDAQ didn't even fall 5,000 points or even close to 5,000 points in the, the tech bubble crash. <laughs> like that, that's, that's some food for thought, right? And the tech bubble is this like famous stock market crash that everybody's going to talk about for decades to go in the future, right? And yet we fell way more points in that, not as much as a percent, but in terms of points, we fell way more in that. Heck, we fell more than the whole entire NASDAQ was at that particular time, Right. And yeah, I feel like that 2022 crash will be forgotten about by a lot of folks, right? So the first thing you got to understand, it's always a buy. It's always a buy. Okay, don't get tricked into the, you know, oh, you know, things are bad. Oh, stocks are dropping, so I can't buy. No, it's always a great buy. You're to buy, right? 
This is a 20 year chart of great companies, right? In terms of great companies with great long term trends, now you've got to differentiate between a long term trend and a short term trend, okay? This is super, super important little gem I want to drop for everybody here, okay? A long term trend, let's just speak about Tesla. Let's just speak about Tesla, okay? A long term trend is looking at Tesla's last 10 years of revenue growth, looking at Tesla's last 10 years of net income growth, looking at Tesla's last 10 years of deliveries growth. That's a long term trend. And looking at the market, the market share of EVs over time, right? How much more there is to capture there. That's long term trend stuff. Looking at a short term trend would be like, let's look at Tesla's last six months, 12 months of deliveries. Let's look at Tesla's last six and 12 months of, you know, cars sold, of revenue, of net income, whatever it is, okay? It's a big difference between a long term trend and a short term trend. Same exact thing with a stock like NVIDIA. Where is NVIDIA's revenue has gone over the last 10 years? Net income gone over the last 10 years, right? Where, where's its stock price going over the last 10 years? Where's NVIDIA's latest quarter been at, right? So you've got to differentiate between long-term trends and short-term fluctuations, okay? Keep in mind, a big recession hurts all companies, and that causes all companies' growth rates to be much lower. But to assume a company's growth rate during a recession is going to be the same as not in a recession is a huge mistake, you know, you could have looked at companies during the great financial crisis and their numbers were horrible and you could have assumed, oh, this is how these companies' growth is. No, you got to go back to long-term trend. You should have been looking at data from 1997 through 2007 and seeing where the trends are going, not 2008 and 2009, because obviously the numbers aren't going to be good then, right? If you were looking at Meta's revenue growth and only judging Meta off of what they were reporting in 2022, you made a massive mistake there. You should have been looking at Meta's revenue growth, net income growth, amount of users, over the last 10 years, that's a 10-year trend, a five-year trend. You could even, if you want to look at a five-year trend, that's a trend as well. A one-year is not a trend. That's just a short-term whatever, fluctuation, okay? So in great companies with great long-term trends, all dips are by, right? NVIDIA stock over the past 20 years is up 40,000% roughly. Apple stock in the past 20 years, 34,000% gain. Tesla stock, 10,000% gain. Amazon, 8,200%. Salesforce, 7,200%. Meta, which hasn't even been a company for nearly even close to 20 years, right? Meta, 1,600% gain. Microsoft, 1,500% gain. AMD, 921% gain, right? In the past 20 years. What are the long-term trends? Now, <laughs> you know, you could have messed up, right? You could have bought companies like IBM and companies like Intel, which in the past 20 years have gotten you 123% gain, which... I don't even think that's kept up with inflation. I bet you we've had more than 123% of inflation in the past 20 years, right? If I think about where real estate prices were 20 years ago versus where they are today, I think real estate prices in all the big growing cities have gone up way more than 123% in the past 20 years. I bet you my city here, Las Vegas, real estate prices have gone up more than 123% in the past... Uh, you know, 20 years, which is horrible. Never mind 54% for Intel, right? And this is where research pays, understanding long term trends with companies, understanding what's actually going on with the underlying business models. This is where all this stuff comes in. This is why it makes sense to put in the work because at the end of the day, you put in the work, you get the results. You don't put in the work and you just, you know, I don't know, IBM, I think I'll buy IBM stock, oh, Intel, I think I'll buy Intel stock, and not understanding what's going on with those businesses, competitive threats, the moat being destroyed, those sorts of things, right? I mean, woo. Research really pays. You got to know what you're doing, right? And so my Become Master Stock Market course, which we're about to have that big sale on, that goes into all this stuff. So you don't end up getting lost and buying some crap stocks. And by the way, I thought this was fascinating. You know, people bootleg my Become Master Stock Market course. It's been that successful over time that people literally bootleg that course, um, which is funny to me because that course, I always add videos to that course. And so, like, I guarantee you they don't even have the videos I've put on that course over the past several years. <laughs> and they bootleg it for 70 bucks and 79 bucks. But you know what's fascinating? I undercut them. I freaking undercut them. Imagine getting undercut. Your bootlegger who's bootlegging my course 
for you know 70 bucks 79 bucks and i come in and undercut you man that's vicious it's vicious i even undercut the bootleggers what can i say man gotta do what you gotta do okay elon elon would do it as well okay so and plus you get access to see the moves i'm making access to discord chat all that other good stuff not just the course so anyways guys appreciate you joining me uh pin comment down there if you want that sale it's uh 10 days away and uh get ready we got some action in the market we got some volatility and uh if things go south here be ready to buy 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 just you better know what you're doing and not just buy crap or just throw money out there in general because you know there's a big difference between this this is like no retirement this you know you got a private plane you got a you got you got any type of lifestyle you want there's a big difference okay much love and have a great day